every Tuesday evening with something that at least we think is of community interest and or of some concern. And if you think that you have something which fits into that category, you'd like to find out how you can be a part of the program, well, why don't you drop us a line, address it to the Let's Talk program in KO Vaughan Radio, PO Box 195, Charlestown in Nevis. So give us a call. Our numbers are one 469 and or 1700. And by the way, those will be the numbers you will use to be a part of this evening's discussion. Again, thank you all very much for joining us. This is your voice in the community, taught that get results. With regard to your participation on the show, we encourage you to call in on the numbers listed 1869-469-1616 and or 1700. Here's a suggestion. You have a question or comment, perhaps you can get a pencil, piece of paper, write it down so that you're well organized. And when you're getting on the show, you take as little time as possible so we can accommodate as many of you as we can. We ask only, first of all, you respect yourselves and then respect others because we will not accept anything we deem that's not within our broadcast standards. But we encourage you to always be forceful with your point. Also, you can follow this live, st live stream on our YouTube channel at Vaughn Radio and our Facebook page at Vaughn Radio. Again, thank you all very much for joining us. This is your voice in the community. Taught that get results. Our first edition this evening or for this year, 2023, we'll have a discussion on a commentary that was made by a social, what I call a social commentator, former parliamentarian. He's a lawyer, G.A. Dwyer Astefan. Now, we're going to play you the comment so that everybody can listen to it. Some of you have heard it already. And then, against that backdrop, we will have a full discussion. We also have with us uh, here in the studio um, Janet Meloni. Uh, we will learn a little bit about her a little later on. We have uh, Dwyer Astefan is online with us as well. He is going to um, back up and defend the comments that he has made as you will hear in the opening intro and then you can weigh in on one eight six nine one six one six or one seven zero zero and we also have Deborah Tyrrell who will also be joining the discussion as well. But as I mentioned we will go first to the comment. We ask you to listen to it and uh, then we are going to uh, get some comments from the, the panel and then we will get some comments from you at one eight six nine four six nine one six one six and one seven zero zero. Again, thank you all very much. Let's go to that commentary by Dwyer Astafan. Greetings, blessed, healthy, loving, peaceful, and happy new year to all. My first commentary for 2023 is about women, our country, values, morality. Our Deputy Governor General is a woman. There are more women in our cabinet and parliament than ever before. The Speaker, Deputy Speaker and Clerk of the Parliament are women. The majority of permanent secretaries are women. There are more female accountants, doctors, lawyers, entrepreneurs, managers, consultants, etc than ever before. And I'm told that more females are graduating high school, CFBC, and university, all of which is encouraging. Of course, what is not encouraging is that our men generally do not seem to be measuring up to the standards of our women in terms of accomplishments, academic, professional, entrepreneurial. And we must all rise we must all rise. Meanwhile, something is happening in the country which is very troubling. Following the death of Robert Bradshaw in 1978, this country started to fall from a state of morality, immorality, then to amorality. Amorality is where in people's minds there is no difference between right and wrong conscience doesn't play a part. It's a dangerous condition. We change from values-based living to brutishness, superficiality, selfishness, insensitivity, crudeness, and vulgarity. 
What you saw on the streets of Bastia just over a week ago was evidence of all of that. Women, many of them mothers, parading the streets in a state of near nakedness. One of them later told me she had done it to relieve stress. Now I can see jumping up and having a good time, being a stress reliever, but how do these public displays of vulgar, near nakedness, bending over, twerking, exposing your nether tenderness, and having men walk up on you, relieve stress? How does objectifying yourself with any number of men taking turns on your behind, in front of the world, relieve your stress? How can you do that and face your children? Is there perhaps a hidden devil in you which needs that sort of degradation to validate itself? Or are you unaware of the fact that you are indeed degrading yourself? Now don't tell me that this is our culture because it is not. It is imported crudeness from Brazil and Trinidad. Indeed, there is nothing cultural about it. It is just vulgar and unbecoming. And we are such copycats. Even when we are copying behaviors that diminish us, we copy still. Are you going to tell me that there are so many of our women in this country who are suffering from such a low level of self-esteem that they would make themselves a public spectacle like this? Having said that though, a lot of people watching on are not seeing anything wrong with it, which suggests that their minds too have been compromised and co corrupted. They say that this is what people do nowadays, go with the flow. This is young people thing, and people are freer than they used to be, freer to express themselves. What is wrong with this? is that if people are free to express themselves and they choose to do so in ways that degrade them and degrade the human condition in our country, then we are all on the way to hell in a handbasket. This is not a good direction for us as women, as men, as families, which to a large extent in Senkits, unfortunately the word families is more a word than an institution. And this is where the breakdown begins. Things are bad and getting worse. What will our children be seeing and doing 10, 20, 30 years from now? What we are doing now is triggering things to the next step of degradation and defilement of the dignity of our women and our people generally. Whatever happened to dignity and elegance? Now I'm not saying that there's no room for little naughtiness, even in public, and I'm not a prude by any stretch of the imagination. But we are contaminating our values and those of our children and of our society. The direction in which we are headed will destroy the psychological, social and cultural fabric of this country. What is worse is that the degradation is being perpetrated by and against women. The woman is the heart and soul of the human race. She is the carrier and the nurturer of the human race. She is more often than not the backbone of the home and the family, which we know in more than enough instances, the home and the family are broken in our country. She is our mother and her body is the tabernacle of humanity. She is a person, yes, very attractive to us males or to most of us males, but she's not just a body. She's a human being with a soul and a mind and she needs to respect herself and she needs to be respected by us. She has to insist on that respect. And the behavior that you see being displayed does not represent insistence on being respected. If you are offended by what I say, I'm sorry, but I have to say it. What went on at the carnival was disrespectful. Let me give you an idea as to how low we've fallen in this place. About 15 years ago, I visited a primary school and spoke with the children. I asked them a number of questions, one of which was, what is the most important organ in your body? A sixth grade girl sitting at the back of the room raised her hand and I told her to stand. 
and she answered that the most important organ in her body was her vagina. She shocked me. Of course, I corrected her. But her answer was a gauge as to where this country was at the time in terms of values and morality. And it has only gotten worse over the years. Tell me, would it be less fun for the revelers if our women dressed less skimpily and danced, and the men too, less crudely and vulgarly? Nothing is wrong with swaying your hips. Nothing is wrong with some gyration. But the crude and vulgar and simulating sex all over the street with the nation's children looking on, that's not good enough and it must stop. And the men who engage in this practice, how would they like it if someone did what they do to these women, to their daughters? Is our culture now defined by walk up and crude vulgarity? If so, we have to change it. And the crudeness is not restricted to the walking up on the streets of Carnival. What are the songs you're listening to? Walk up, wind up, sexual and not subtle lyrics, blatant lyrics that you're hearing and are being played on the radios. Hi day, with children listening. What do you expect the product to be? The product will be what we have now. Crudeness, wanton, open, indiscriminate vulgarity and degradation of our country. You hear the crudeness on the streets, loud music blasting out of stores. That's the way you attract people, by making noise, foolish noise. Loud music blasting out of vehicles, more powerful than some of the radio stations we have. And I don't care if they distract or disturb you. This is the crudeness I'm talking about. The brutishness. Crossing each other on the street, crossing elders, not greeting, not responding, no graciousness, no social graces. Well, I shouldn't say none, but very little. This is part of the decline of our human condition in the country. Demanding respect when you don't behave respectfully yourself. And that's very popular among the young people. He dissed me, he disrespected me. They're fighting each other in the schools. Literally, the girls. Violence, crudeness, all of the crap we've swallowed hook, line and sinker from the north. Along with all of the crap we've taken from the section of Jamaican music that is crap. Because there's a lot of Jamaican music that is inspiring and beautiful. But we prefer the crap. And now all of the crap from Brazil and Trinidad with the near nakedness at the carnival for the women. And the walking up and the twerking. This is where we are at in January 2023. In a country that says it wants to move up, yet we're falling down. Of course, people are making money out of all of this, which is cynical. I don't mind people making money. That's a good thing but not at the expense of the dignity and the honor of the people of the country. Entertainment must not be defilement. We are being degraded and devalued as human beings and as a people, and we need to stop it. My biggest concern is the degradation and devaluation that has befallen our female population, our beautiful women and mothers, who instead of being the majestic, dignified, and yes, when appropriate, sexy queens and princesses that they can be being the cornerstone of all human energy the women look at what they're doing you even see the young ones in the schools when you have the kiddies parade how are they dancing i invite you all to go online and look at some of the african countries their traditional dancing the other dancing you see the swaying of hips and so forth but you don't see this crudeness so this is not something that is culturally and historically intrinsic to the people of this country. This is borrowed and copied crap that is contaminating us. The solution starts in the home, but so many of our homes are broken, led by single mothers. A lot of them not properly equipped in terms of training and soft skills to run a home in relationships with men that are not deep and emotional and meaningful rather superficial and in some instances mercenary and women accepting being the side chick number two or number three satisfied that maybe a few dollars and a dinner and a buying something here or there is enough for them to be second or third best there must be a man out there who will make you his one and only not just the best of a lot we all need to pull up our socks but i dare say if the women of this country took the lead on setting the standards the men will follow.
I want us to reflect on these things. This is the beginning of a new year, and we've just had a new government installed. Let it be the beginning of a new era, a new direction, which we have to lead. Otherwise, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And if that is what you want for your children and grandchildren, if that is how you want the future of St. Kitts to be, then you need to rethink your position. Until next time, God bless. Be safe. Be a good citizen. Don't be afraid to speak up and speak out. Don't be afraid to speak truth to power. Don't be afraid to speak truth to power. Be respectful, but be firm, be honorable, and be a responsible citizen. God bless. Always satisfying. Vaughn Radio. The Powerhouse. Do not be afraid to speak up and speak out. The last words of G.A. Dwyer Astafan. Dwyer, you're there. Good evening, Weber. Good evening okay. to everybody. And a happy and healthy New Year's wish to you. Thank you, and the same to you. And thank you for that comment. It allowed us to start off the Let's Talk program toward and get results for 2023 on that note. Now, I'm going to um, invite the others to join in, but first let me um, just say, uh, Mrs. Janet Maloney, good evening. Good evening, Sir Herbert. Good evening, radio listeners. And it's good to have you, and uh, we're very much appreciative of the fact that you decided to speak up and speak out on this particular topic. Okay. Uh, so we, we thank you. We also have Deborah Tyrrell uh, on, on, on the line as well. Deborah, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, very well. Uh, so we thank you very much as well to, to weigh in, to speak up, and to speak out. Let me just say that in trying to get this thing together, notwithstanding that um, Dwyer in his commentary mentioned that he got a lot of feedback from persons and so on, I have found in our society that people will speak up perhaps and speak out but it's where so I I mean you know thank the two of you who are very brave to come on this forum to speak up and speak out in terms of um, the comment that do I made. so thank you again um, Deborah for for joining us you're welcome good evening okay so do I let, let's let's begin by some extension on um, that same comment. Full, le, le, let me ask you, we're not going to um, have a long discussion on it, but here's a comment that I have when um, I listened to the commentary and I spoke to a few persons, so I'd like you to just to make a comment on it. Persons would ask, okay, Dwyer, you mentioned that this um, country has been on a downward spiral socially from since Robert Bratcher left, correct? Pretty much. Pretty much, pretty much right. So in terms of values. In terms of values. Yeah. Right. So the question persons will ask, the automatic question is, who should fi fix it? And they're going to argue, Dwyer, that in the period of time between then and now, um, you were parliamentarian, you were a minister of culture, and those are two powerful positions to, um, to, to be in a position to do something about it. And you would say what? I would say that I made an effort in my own little way. But I would also say that it is very convenient for people to react like that. When you were there and you did nothing, or you did very little. But I think the more appropriate response should be, okay, what can we do from here on? The fire truck came a little late, and the house, the fire is somewhat expensive. But let us try to save the house. Rather than saying, you were there, what did you do? Um, you know, that, 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 that's not going to get us anywhere, really. My opinion. The question is, those who are asking that, what are they going to do? And I think, to some degree, the commentary has been successful because in it, 
I ask us to reflect on these things, reflect on these things, and there's a question in my mind that people have been reflecting on these things and expressing their opinions on these things. I believe the conversation needs to continue, but I don't think there's much doubt that the commentary has triggered the debate and heated and passionate debate and pressure, which in my view is a healthy thing in a democracy. Oh, okay, um, let me let Mrs. Maloney weigh in. You've heard the comment, you say what? Yes, I heard the commentary that was made by Mr. Asafan, and I must say that I love it. I, I don't even know if I should add anything more. It was almost perfect. I too, I am concerned about our women, the role that they play in the community and where they are going with this type of behavior. I would like to know why. <laughs> you, 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 um, you agree with... Oh, totally, with totally, stuff. totally. Um, his commentary was almost uh, perfect. Well, okay, so so you are for what? Because if if you're going to argue or agree with the, the stuff that he, he made, um, what is the alter alternative that you're going to suggest to the women, the young people who he, he, he refer referenced? I, I must say I agree with him in that he said that we are just following, we are becoming copycats, um, Brazil, Trinidad, that is not our culture. And um, if we are to copy something, at least copy things that are positive and who have women, maybe they don't see it as degrading themselves, but, you know, skinning back and being naked, and ex especially in front of the children that we brought into this world. I, I don't think it's where our society is supposed to be going at this present time. In fact, um, what was... Um, amazing or um, interesting if I must say it, I attended Cari Festa um, in Trinidad in 2019. I think a lot of persons went there anticipating oh Trinidad was going to come on stage when they had the Trinidad night with a lot of nakedness. Lo and behold, they, they, no, not, they, it was none of that. They, they came with their traditional, um, they brought forth their, their cultural art forms with um, their splendid costumes and stuff like that. It was so amazing. And so we, while we are following them, Trinidad did not present that kind of vulgarity and nakedness. When they were presenting Trinidad, they brought, they, they pull out all the stuff when it came to um, presenting to the world the uh, indigenous art forms. And so why can't we do the same instead of you know just this nakedness on the street Deborah what what do you think what's your view well um Rebel, first of all I agree that there's some borrowing of the culture but within our Sankatiba society we tend to applaud borrowing from others um we are only just getting to a place where we're starting to excuse me, Weber. Yes, uh, Miss Miss Chirel. Yes, I I'm not hearing you clearly, and my my put, my phone put, volume put is up to the max. Okay, um, is there anywhere where you could facilitate? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try and adjust it. Yes, That's go ahead, Deborah. To, to interrupt you, Miss Chirel. Yes, go ahead. Is better? Yes, now just go ahead. I'm I'm gonna adjust it. So, what I was saying is that we tend to applaud borrowing, right? We have our Californians go on stage sounding almost exactly like the Californians in order to get to the finals. We don't encourage um, new ideas, trying new things. And for us to and the presentation for carnival and other things i think that's where we have to start we have to start with saying it's okay to try it's okay you don't have to make a big deal about a failure all right you shouldn't even be using the word fail right? you should be encouraging new ideas i think this whole thing of the display of the costumes the display of the body I don't agree with it either. I, I was 
history on Culturama for a number of years. I don't agree with it. I didn't agree with it. I couldn't stop it then either. I think we have a young population and we have a tourism product that says, pop, enjoy yourself, love yourself, relax, different things. Right, so all of that is part and parcel of what we're selling. We have to take an initiative and try and sell something else, try and build our skills in other way, try and encourage our young people to try new things, invent new things. Inventors think it's sound. We have to encourage all of those things from happening. It's one thing to see this is happening today, and as well as said, yes. The house is burning, the fire truck and that can be done well. And, um, um, I, I like your comment. I think it was good to hear it. But it there, there, there's it raised some questions for me. Right, I think um, it, it suggests a lot of, of uh, older world in terms of the the use of the word dignity and elegance. Um Values, values of yesteryear. We have this is this is 2023. Definition of dignity and elegance. That's what I'll, I'll stop now. Oh, oh De Deborah, you, you you mentioned that you were on the Culturama committee. Yes. But you couldn't do anything about it. The question I'd like to ask you and um, Dwyer and also um, Janet, who can do something about it? I think that the Culture Armor Committee, um, if they were supported by um, probably the, the minister then, um, Abanati B, the executive direct, director of Culture Armor, um, I don't know. I, I seem as though that persons who are participating in culture, even for the Calypso show, is dictating what's supposed to happen instead of persons put some procedure, um, rules, reg whatever in place, and that people are guided by them. And so, if the person in charge does not seem to to be bothered by, you know, what is happening, then it may not change. So, the person in charge, you think? in terms of the office can do something about it uh, yeah. but, but if they don't have the same view as you shared nothing may be done nothing may be done Doyle, who can do something about it i think everybody whoever but what i would like to see happen and maybe that sounds like a trite answer but it really has to be and um, um, everybody has to be involved maybe not literally everybody but all of the interest groups I would like to see the federal government and maybe in collaboration with the Native Island Administration have a national consultation on standards for carnival. Um, I don't see any harm being done by having that conversation and that may lead us to where consensually we think we ought to be in terms of standards but whatever you do you have to have standards it cannot be a free-for-all it cannot be people saying this is my time to express my constitutional rights and a lot of people believe that constitutional rights are absolute rights there is no such thing as an absolute right your rights end where mine begin and vice versa and both your and my rights are subject to the rights of the general body of humanity um, with which we live, the community, the country. But you don't think the fact that it is ongoing and it is very prevalent is a suggestion that the majority of the folks think it's okay? Perhaps I don't think the majority of the folks thinks it's okay. I didn't hear that. No, she's saying that, that she does not think that the majority of persons think it's okay. But the point is, by having the conversation, a national consultation, whatever you want to call it, we will get to the point to find out what the majority of the people think in the country and what is the right thing because 
maybe the majority could be thinking a certain way and maybe that's not the way to go um, in terms of having a better future but it is to me essential to have that first world conversation where are we where are we going if you're going to have a truth next year it's just in the middle passage are we going to see sections of that truth with g-strings and feathers and women lying down on the street with their legs open either facing down or up and in some instances their tender parts being exposed depicting the middle passage is the message of the truth lost now in the individual having his or her time of his or her life where are we? I mean I, I, I put this thing out there for us to have conversation and I'm glad Weber that you organize this but I think this thing needs to be done on a national basis we need to accept ourselves with regard to this and it does have to do with values there are limits there are limits within the law there are limits um, and you can test where we are in terms of where we were before and the where we want to be the fact the, that the issue is so controversial mm -hmm. do you think that we have the courage to have that conversation um, depending of course on the office and the positions that we have because obviously if you hold certain offices and positions in a particular society you have a, a, a little more clout so to speak than others so do we have the courage do you think to have that conversation and then to maybe do something about it such as Janet uh, uh, had suggested do we have the courage Weber to face the consequences of a declining value system so that in three years time the men's private parts will now be exposed and three years after that you will have population on the street I'm not trying to be melodramatic I'm not saying that will happen the thing is are you going to set limits right now we seem to be moving in a direction without any paying any attention as to is this where we want to be? But who and should and who must set the limits? That's that's what I'm getting at. If you're a leader, you have to take decisions that may not be popular. You cannot be a leader if you're not going to take strong positions. If you cannot face the heat, don't join the fire brigade. I use the same analogy with the fire. We have to face these things, otherwise they will knock us down, Weber. And this is one of the many challenges that we face. The, 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 from a practical and realistic standpoint, Janet, do you think that we uh, use that to reference so that we don't zero in and call any person's name? Do you think that we have the, the, the courage? Because somebody had mentioned earlier that maybe the head of the committees and so on, maybe we should start to set standards. Do we have the courage to do it when we know people will oppose? we will have the courage to do what we have to do once we care enough to do so well, so, yes let me be more specific the minister responsible for carnival the federal in the federal cabinet should initiate this national consultation and he must get the blessings of the cabinet to have a national consultation. That is what happens in democracies. People have a consultation. What harm can that bring to have a consultation? You may have some heat generated in the process of these consultations. But we have to face this heat now rather than facing a worse heat later. Possibly. I don't see, I mean, if, if any politician would would duck away from this, then he or she is what it's all, could be leading. I, I, I mean, it, you had mentioned, Dwyer, that you got some pushback when you made a commentary, yes. signaling obviously that there are indeed folks who see nothing wrong 
with what we are criticizing. Correct. Um, what is your sense of of numbers? You, you think a lot of people think that way or m might just be the persons who actually participate in, in, in the troops and that sort of activity? Well, based on my personal experience, and I wouldn't want to extrapolate and say that the national numbers are a direct reflection of the numbers in my personal experience. But a clear majority of persons who provided me with feedback are in general agreement with my argument. There was one lady who participated in the carnival and I wrote about her in last week's commentary. She told me it is her opportunity to relieve stress. And I told her that if you wait one or two days in the year to relieve a pile of stress for the whole year, you could put in yourself in problem. Um, she said, and it gives her a chance to be naughty. That was the word she used. She said she doesn't allow her child to come and look at herself. And I asked her why. She said because she doesn't think her child should be looking at that. I said, but it's okay for you if other people's children are looking at it. Because if we continue this trend, Weber and Deborah and Janet, in the next five years, our carnival parade will be excluded. We'll be excluding our children. And if you are thinking of excluding your children from a national carnival parade, then you need to do something about that parade, don't you? But the truth is, though, that we've been, as you point out in the commentary, we've been having these sort of standards for a number of years. And the, the various, varied carnival or cultural committees and stuff like that have promoted them highly. So here's a question. For a start, as a suggestion, if the government is in agreement, for instance, or the authorities, let's use the word the authorities, in agreement with your line of thought, what, if anything, you think they can do in terms of um, events that they host? Well, they set standards for the Calypso contest, for the Queen, so and so forth. There are also laws under the Small Charges Act. There are specific um, references to carnival. In fact, the minister has the authority to make regulations concerning things like obscenity, lewdness, and so forth during a carnival. I don't know if you're aware of that small charges. That right. I think it may be section 41. I could be wrong, but that is not the area of law in which I work. So the government can do things, but if the government is going to do things, I need to sound repetitive, but I have to repeat, it must begin with a consultation. If the government, if the present federal government does not believe that this issue rises to the level where it justifies a national discussion, then it means that the government finds no problem worth arguing over on this. And in my opinion, that would be a very sad situation because uh, a lot of people, a lot of people are offended by it, offended by it. And when a participant, a mother, tells me, she's a friend of mine, I have a lot of respect for her, very hardworking, very ambitious young woman. This is her way to relieve her stress. And I think she's turning her thinking, you know, because she's thinking about it. Um, if nothing is going to be done about this, One see, this is a reflection of the national psyche, you know, or a portion of the national psyche. Do as you like. Do as you like. It's your right. Don't care what anybody has to say. So I tell with motherhood. And the fathers or the men to partner them in these acts of open vulgarity, which is what they are, stimulating sex. I mean, there are lots of times and places that adults can find to do these things, not even simulate, actually do it. Um, what is the need for this 
vulgar exhibitionism. What it is in us that wants us to do this? It's gay abandon. It, what is it? We need to get to the bottom of it. You the think psychological determinants of it. You and think the government is the best agency to lead this discussion. I mean, you think the church should weigh in as well? I think the church should weigh in. I think they should go on the pulpit and say how they feel. Because getting things done cannot take place if people stay within their comfort zone. You have to get out of your comfort zone. And if the pulpit, people who follow Jesus Christ, who was by no means a coward, he spoke out and paid the ultimate price for it. If people on the pulpit want to gather crowds on Sunday and tell them soft, easy things and not speak the hard thing, especially given that their mandate is a mandate of morality, morality and righteousness. Then they may as well close the doors. They have to be part of it, but I think the government should lead it. You know, I keep being puzzled of instances like this where it appears as if I'm getting from the panel that a lot of or maybe the majority of the people are against this sort of action but it prevails that, that keeps puzzling me why is this so it, it shouldn't puzzle you Weber, because we live in the age now there's, a, there's a, a mentality an attitude now i might not agree with what he's doing but me and i say nothing about it me and get himself in not with nobody so then so then that is who we are so why are we complaining then okay well let's leave it as it is then right because it seems okay. as if that's what we want correct I, I, it, it, it I, means that the program is now ended <laughs> maybe maybe we can do okay. that yes janet go ahead i don't think it's what the majority of people want but there's so much things that happen that the majority of people may not want but nobody will stand up and say anything right I mean, persons I find, okay, I don't like it, so I just will not go into town, to Charleston, to see what is happening. I do not like it, so I have a choice. I can stay home and not be a part of it. So that is how people are, um, um, are adopting or what they, they, they're doing in terms of whether they come and be upset, they just stay home. That they, is so, yes. They, they have a choice. And the they choice, have a choice. Right, and the choice seems to me is that they go to see it because hundreds and thousands of people are looking on correct well it's nega business if i should term it as that you get to i mean it's a free there are strip clubs and you go and you have to pay um on those days men especially or women whoever want to see the nakedness they don't have to pay for it so they, they just go and see the spectacular um spectacle on the street for free Be because while we were putting this together um and getting some feedback one person i gather who um, normally wears the same costumes and so on and so forth who defended it said well if persons don't want to see and they don't appreciate it then don't come that's how some people are dealing with it exactly what the person said i don't want to see it i don't want to be a part of it so i have a choice i can stay out of town when it's happening and I those who kid, um, are it interested in seeing I mean, we live in a small society. But, but the truth is that they're, they're not staying away. Let me take this this caller. Uh, hello, good evening. Hey, good evening. I'm a mother and I'm a grandmother. You understand? And I cannot think, I can't understand why that thing is hard to have them kind of things. So whether listen to me tell you something, right? It's not big people alone with little children from poor and stuff and little girls. So what are you telling them? So then when then you hear that you see a boss and get here, oh the government must this and the government must that. No, no, it can't happen. You got to discipline your home. But you see whether sometimes when you look at it, as Janet just said, the strip thing, the strip thing is totally different than the carnival they had in thinking. I totally disagree with it because when you look up to them big man there and they are going up and up and little girls and things, and the problem I say. The mother right there. And they could hear you can't so you try all the police and they're not gonna walk and all kind of thing. If you took the children about there in the front and bother me with it, bother me. 
are reporting the cardinal innocent children from the success for the parents and the stupidness that the son will do for carnival. And if the government don't step in, I'm disappointed. I'm so disappointed. This thing shouldn't happen. So Not in our small island. So, caller, might I ask you, so you think that the government, both in carnival and culture armor, should mm -hmm. intervene and set certain guidelines and so on for the as as Dwyer was mentioning the, 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 the behavior. Of course they are just totally in despair. I totally agree because you see that and see them they got them every afternoon. It's what we're talking about there's a lady who sits as you walk in a bank and she keeps like coming and talking about it. And whether it bothers me because these little innocent children and when I happen to talk to some people about the restaurant, they are all oh, the wanna come to the end. So they wanna come to the end, so you must tell you that. No! Them children are too innocent to be going into any kind of things there. I disagree. I mean when you see the police who study them and the police are can't find no data. Oh I have no work. I didn't get on and off and I think whether it eats me up like cancer. See ya. Okay. Alright, thank you. Okay. Um do I, you heard you heard a comment? Yes, um you said um something to the effect that the lady was saying something like I am suggesting that the government intervene. That no no she she's saying she's saying that she thinks that the government should intervene. Oh no, well I'm not saying the government should intervene at this point. I'm saying the government well if I intervene if she means the government should put together a national consultation and let the discussion take place. Let us see where the discussion leads us. And then whatever appropriate action or no action be taken. But when you're going to tell people, if you don't want us to be carnival on the public park in 10 kids, on the public park where everybody has a right to be, if you don't want us to be vulgarity and the looting and the crudeness that's happening on the public street, on the road leading to the hospital, stay away. Well, can't you tell you if you want to have your loot and your crudeness? Go somewhere where nobody to be? Go somewhere private? So this street belongs to you, for you to do as you like. And if you don't like it, you must go home. That's it. And I'm not speaking of quarrel. What I'm saying is that this is a life issue that justifies a national debate. That's all I'm saying. That's all. And let I us think see it that's a good idea to have a, a national debate on it. I think out of that debate, a lot of issues will get discussed exactly. and set a new a new way for think it's to identify and distinguish itself from everything else that's going on in the world and add a little bit of uniqueness to the tourism product at the same time. Well, and speaking of that, um, Deborah, I've heard a couple of people say that these costumes and the, the, the behavior that we see attract tourists to the country. Nothing tall or so. People don't come here to see people in G string and the nether parts exposed. The people who come to sing it around Christmas and Carnival were coming anyway. They'd be very interested in seeing a carnival parade. Okay, let me take this photo. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. You're on the air. Could you go ahead? Yeah, this is Pastor Eric Lerard speaking. Yes, Pastor. I want to congratulate the Pastor friend, my good friend, for bringing this matter to the floor, to the public. I addressed it from my pulpit two Sundays ago. Because that Sunday morning, I saw some pictures that were sent to me about the G-string, and I mentioned it just in intro, intro, just like that. The G-string, I asked, this is what people took their children to send kids to look at? And some people put their hands to their mouth because I mentioned G-string. And I believe, as you said, that the church, the pastors, the evangelical association, the Christian council, ought to be on the forefront of this matter, and I thank Dwyer Astafan. Dwyer, good evening. Happy New Year, Happy Christmas. Sorry I didn't get in touch with you. 
but my heart, it does my heart good that you would bring this to the forefront and Dwyer would be the one to lead it. And I am hoping and trusting I would talk to other pastors about it, that we would take the lead and that this thing does not happen again in the Federation of Sinkis and Nevis. This has gone too far. Again, thank you. Thank the last friend. And it does my heart good to hear that this matter is being addressed. Good night. May God bless you. Happy New Year to you, Weber. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Deborah, you want to win? Janet, you want to win at this point? I think the alternative to this kind of behavior is that if we work at um, restoring our traditional art form and to put them out on the street, then it will um, alleviate some of the, the other distraction and the gesturing and stuff like that. But here we are seeing the promotion of this kind of um, behavior and costume, but then we are not seeing um, the, the same attempt or the amount of time put to restore or to showcase our traditional art form, and that is of a um, major concern to me. Let me take this. Good evening. Thank you for holding. Good evening to you, Weber. Happy New Year. Good evening to your panelists. Happy New Year. Good evening to everybody listening. Weber, this consultation business is only murky in the waters. There is a, a carnival committee. There is a cultural and a secretariat. And the way I know it has happened over the years is that they put criteria in place to say what they want and people have to abide if you can abide by the guidelines you will not achieve anything and i think that will solve the problem you see this consultation is just talk shop gets no results the, the, the people in charge they should have moral standards, moral responsibilities, and they know how to, 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 to put things in place for what they want. But they, I mean, the government don't need to get involved. The government don't need to get involved. We know what it takes to control what we want. For culture armor, for carnival, we know what, they, they know that, the, the, the committee knows what they want, and they put criteria in place. The, the, the people abide. I don't see any difference now. You, you know, know Carter, you know, yes, sir. You know that that's an interesting point. Is it fair then to conclude, based mm. on your reasoning, that the associations or committees that are in place, we are getting the exact result of their thinking and direction? Yes. Yes, an emphatic yes. Let me give you. Let me give you a a a, a scenario where where. Where I, I, I drive a, a truck in the, in, the, in the carnival and you got people disappearing in front of the truck and they're telling me I should just push them. I said, no, that's not going happen because I ultimately is responsible for that. You have marshals in front of the truck who are supposed to keep the people going forward and they are telling me that I should move forward. And the marshals, they're not doing anything, getting paid to do it, and they're not doing what they're supposed to do. And then they're getting down on me. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not in the position. I'm not, not going to be pushing anybody. It's not going to happen. You know, I mean, people pay to their job, and they're just walking with their two hands in the ear. As a matter of fact, when they tell me, when they tell me, um, move forward, there's a, a young lady. In front of the, the, the truck, I can't see them. People on the other side of the truck saying, wait, 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 wait. The marshal telling me come forward. And, you know, I mean, the marshal is supposed to be doing the job. Not doing the job, they get in behind the driver. Listen, man, I think, I think people just need to do what they're supposed to do. The committee is supposed to put criteria in place. And that will take care of everything. This national consultation is just talk shop. But, but all, all the truth is, talk. the truth is, uh, that the committee has things in place, but it's just that some of us may not like it or agree with it based on the result we're getting. You agree with that? No, I don't agree with that. I'm saying if you put criteria in place saying no nudity, 
they will abide or they, or they, do, they don't achieve anything. But what I'm, what I'm arguing is that they have criteria in place. No, not, not, not to govern what the problem that, that no. we're talking about right yeah, now. Well, let me put it bluntly then. Whether they don't see it the way you may see it. Because they obviously feel that the nudity is acceptable in the parade or what they're organizing. You agree with that? Well, I would agree with that, yes, Robo. Okay. But is that is that what the masses want? Is that what the people want? Well, that's that, that's where the debate is. So then we have a committee in place that doing all we want. So what we do? Well, we'll see. You see what I, you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, I got you. But I, I really don't need, I really don't see it any big hooray hooray. They just need to put things in place. Because a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, somebody sing a song that was uh, sung by somebody else, and they put things in place. And uh, up to this year, people got disqualified. You think they will do it again? Right. So I mean, no, they didn't do it no, but you think they will? They will, they will go out of the way to make sure you don't have my back. Right. So your your point is. That we don't My have to go all around the bush. We can fix this thing easily. Easily. Okay. Easily. Okay. It's going around, 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 around. Not necessary. Okay. Put things in place. You got people who are supposed to do the work, put things in place. Let's get it done. Okay. I, I got you. you. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Good. Yes. Doya. Yes, sir. You, 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 you got any reaction to that caller? Yes, um, I found the conversation between you and the gentleman quite interesting, Weber. You are as sharp as ever. Um, you see, the committees are not going to take action um, on their own. This is going to have to come. Um, I'm respectfully disagreeing with the gentleman, and I don't think the consultation will be a talk shop. I think we have to understand that democracies operate on consultation between the leaders and the people. And you get a feel of what the people are and where they are. It is not the carnival committee that can set regulations under law to govern certain conduct at the carnival. It is the minister who is a politician. And when he or she passes the regulation in the approved manner, then they become the law and they have to be abided by by all concerned and enforced by the police. I could see the importance of the carnival and cultural committees in the process, but I don't see them making the final decisions and I don't see them feeling that they have the authority to make the final decisions unless they get the approval of those to whom they have to account, which yes. are who are their ministers. You know, Dwyer, this might be an unscientific sample. But, you know, as I was garnering uh, people to even participate and give their views on this topic, I found it very difficult to get persons to defend the nudity, the costumes, etc., etc. But I found it very easy to get persons to support um, the, the view that you have. So that should say something, right? Well, you know, I like people think scientifically, um, including governing. You must do so with a heart and with compassion, but you, 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 you have to make sure you're making the right move and making the right move at the right time. Okay, Dwyer, let me just take this. Yes. Hello, good evening, thank you for holding. Yes. Hello, good evening, thank you for holding. Yes, good evening, uh, Good evening, Dwyer, my friend. I must congratulate you for the uh, topic you brought to before. It's timely, quite timely. Maybe way overdue. Anyhow, we must sensitize the community to the extent where we recognize that this is not an easy task to get done because you brought in the information about the Honorable R. L. Dasha back in 78. 78 to now is part of the year. 41 years since That takes a long time. Anyhow, based on how we as a society is compiled, 
we are going down the road of immorality and countries criticize the Taliban simply because they got some seemingly archaic laws. But go to the heart of morality and a sense of keeping people guided in terms of how they should behave, how they could, should conduct themselves. As a result, we must always look at them, even though they, they got archaic laws in place. Some of those laws are consistent with our own values. Now, based on how those people operated, they are almost like quadrupeds, the animals, because they're supposed to be able to have some kind of decency within them, and that decency should be able to carry them upward and onward. So, again, congratulations for the peace. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, yes, Janet, you, you want to? Yeah, um, I agree with the caller um, just, just before that talk about the committee can put um, terms and agreement. Maybe not um, law, but um, laws, but terms and agreement that persons who want to participate in Culturama or Carnival, they have to be governed by the terms and agreement. And just so there are probably terms and agreement used in the, the Calypso show or Queen show, um, so it must also extend to the, the street parade. And I think it can work for a start. There were, yeah, yes, yes, do I? May, may I say something? Yes. And if you want to, um, Deborah, to, to, to step in. Yes, do I? Okay. Um, I want us, as we have this conversation, not to look at this as strictly a carnival phenomenon. When people go on the parade on the 2nd or the 1st of January in the new year, they bring with them who they are. They bring with them the experiences and the attitudes and the behaviors that were molded throughout the year leading up to that and the years leading up to that. So we need to look at other things. What is the music being played on the radio? I'm not saying your station weather. But you hear suggested sometimes explicit lyrics on radio, you go to functions, you hear DJs playing music, you hear cars driving around the island with all kinds of expletives and vulgar things. Um, so the loudness, the crudeness, all of those things are things that um, drip, 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 drip into people's mind. People are now, whereas in our time, the elders played a very important part in our lives. There has been a disconnect between elders and the younger generation. And now we, 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 we latch on to the cell phone, the tablet, to, to, to the TV, to music, whatever it is. And most of this is not monitored. In the case of the children, not managed. See? Because sometimes parents say, look, I have a headache, I'm tired, I have a headache. You can turn on your guitar, whatever, whatever. So, what we're seeing at Carnival is behavior that has been inculcated in people for the year leading up to, and the years leading up to that particular day. You know, Dwyer, the example that you just put forward is interesting. When you mention the, what is being played, including on the radio, and you said you're not saying us, right? Now, yes. what I find is interesting in that is this, that I'm not going to shy away, um, because you don't hear that degree with us. And the reason is, is because is who is at the helm. So, therefore, 
who is at the helm matters, doesn't it? In every case, yes. Okay. In every facet of life, yes. Okay. So, so, so therefore, the the results that we are getting in the instances that we are talking about, who at the helm matters, correct? Yes, yes. Let's go to this caller. Hello, I'm good evening. Yes. Hello, good evening. You're on the air. Good evening. Go ahead. Hello. You're on the air. Could you go ahead? Yes. I, I don't have a problem. Okay, happy new year. Sorry. Thank you. Hello? The same happy return to you. Go ahead, please. Okay. I don't see a problem with the people I'm just like that. Only once a year, right? And, and look about, what about... Hello? You're on. Just just go yes. ahead. Okay, what yes. about um, Trinidad, Miami? And, and, and then the, these people still eating them, advertising. I mean, they're talking about children coming to town. You have kids carnival. Yes, you have kids carnival. If then not these things going to happen, why bring it to them and then talk? Well, I don't see a problem. I, I would not just like that. I would not just like that, but I don't see a problem with people. Coming just in the truth, them just in like that. I don't see a problem. Caller, you, 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 you ask a question saying, Well, why bring your children then if you don't want them to see them? Correct? Yes. Okay, so, so the answer I think somebody made earlier was this The difference is that it's on the public streets. And so yes, they're I saying agree. that. Yes. I agree, but remember. These troops are advertising long before Carnival, before um, Parade Day. So if you know, you know these things advertising and the children them go, why bring them? If that, that's my point. Why bring them? And you know, if they, they just get up and put on the, 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 the just wherever they, they buy, 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 wherever. Huh? Yeah, I, I, um, we're listening, yeah. Yeah, they ain't just get up and put them on. They've been advertising long before. You have kiddie, as I said, you have kiddie's carnival. You bring your child to kiddie's carnival because you know that these bad food, you will hold the, the, the big people of ventures. You don't want a child to just like that. I mean, to see it. So me, personal, I don't see a problem with it. What if somebody argues then, okay, so what if you don't, bring the children to see the parade, but then they record it and then they put it on the television and it's in the home. Don't, you know, but don't let the children watch it. No, if okay. it's going to affect your child. Okay. And, I mean, Baba, let's get real. This is advertising before, if you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's advertising before. Yes, as I say, you have kids kind of Look at Trinidad, Miami, Antigua, all over these days. If nobody wants this, nobody wants to hold back food. <laughs> I, I got you. Well, maybe for a light moment, as uh, uh, um, uh, lyrics in a particular calypso that I like, that I like. It says, "If you can't take the jam, don't come." Right. Okay. All right. Thank you I very got, much. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Do I, I have to ask a uh, question, Webber? Yes. Um, to ask her if. While she is not uncomfortable with the costume, and clearly she is uncomfortable because she says, don't let the children come. That is a reflection of discomfort. What she says is what's happening. So leave the children home. They have kiddies cannibal. It so happens that you're seeing the germs. When I say the germs, the, the beginning of what you see in the adult cannibal, you're seeing the beginnings of that in the kiddies cannibal. But what I really want to ask her was, even if the costumes, because she was speaking about the costume, are acceptable to her, is the conduct in the costume acceptable to her? Because to me, it is more the conduct than the costume. And I wanted to ask her that. And um, I hope she calls back in and, and, and gives an answer to that. If she's comfortable with the conduct, and if as a woman, which she is, and probably a mother, if she believes that that is blowing off steam, that is acceptable for the mothers of the nation. Okay, let me and take... 
Let me take this call. Hello, good evening. Thank you for holding. Yes, Mrs. Taaska Sam. Me again. Yeah. Yeah, listen to the phone. Listen to the phone. Not not Yes, go Brother. ahead and, and tell Brother. Yes. Brother. Yes, I, I mean that I mean in, in that I comfortable with the way how some of them behave. But it's kind of bad. You know, sometimes they will just as I say once a year, they go to drink and they just party. Yeah, for me to feel comfortable like for them. Cause them feel comfortable with it. You tell me? And and again, he's saying that uh, hello? Yes, go ahead, you go he's ahead. He's saying that um when he, when he was asking about the kid, the kid, yeah? No, he. I think he he suggested you're already seeing the the semblance of it coming through in the kids as well. Well, it's not it's not for us as parents to control our kids. I mean, that don't happen. Um, my last my 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 last year is twenty twenty seven. So it's for us to control them. For us to control them. But, as I said, these things are advertising all the time, so I don't see, and Mr. Ackerson, do you see these things all the time? Why is he talking about it now? So the, 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 so the, the, the answer, the question he, he wanted to put to you mm -hmm. was if you're comfortable with what they do, the, the twerking and the what he refers to as the walking up and so on, if you're comfortable well, well, with that. Yes. It's, I'm comfortable, it's not me. It's not you. I'm okay. not doing it, it's them. Okay. So it's them have to be comfortable with their stuff or whatever. And your view is, is once me. they're comfortable with it, you're, you're right. good. Right. Okay. I've got right. Once they're comfortable, if I ain't comfortable, he <laughs> tell me. Okay. I can't tell them nothing. Okay, I got you. So they're comfortable with the self. And as I said, Mr. Askerfan, this is not the first every year they come with this. Same thing about every year they come with this same thing about, about how the people enjoy. That is this style. We have to get up to date. We can't go along to call people, but we have to get up to date, Rebo. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Do I, you got the answer? Exposing our vaginas in public is up to date. And if they want to do it, it's okay. It, it is not business of anybody else who happens to be on the public street. I tell you the next thing we're about gonna be nakedness, full fledged nakedness with body pain, then the men's penises will come out and then the copulation. It's nobody's business but the people who are doing it on the public street that belong to all of us. in America than there is in England. Well, I'm, 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 I'm looking at the fact that um, we are what the rock culture is um, because I think you see a lot of that style of dress in the dance hall culture, the rock culture and, and that's kind of where we, we're starting to borrow from. Yeah. And it's not up to me to say whether that is good or bad. Okay, that is something it is it is what i've observed but i think even the rap culture if you look at the rap culture <laughs> that kind of culture came out of the, the the communities they were invented within a community and then they were celebrated and encouraged to become what they are now so we have to look to ourselves to decide what aspects of our culture are we going to encourage, where are we going to encourage inventiveness? Where are we going to encourage what we all accept as appropriate freedom of expression? That's my take on it. How are we going to encourage our younger people 
to to do that to, to to feel comfortable coming up with um a different way of doing things instead of copying well i take your point um but i like to believe that it takes a village to raise a child and if people are going to say leave your child at home because the adult carnival is x rated if you're going to tell me that women and the mothers of this nation are going to deliberately or maybe inadvertently expose the private part and that is why they call private part because they're not to be shared by the public on the seven nude dancer or some other kind of person in that field of endeavor if those things are part and parcel of freedom of expression then you're telling the village it is everybody for himself and herself and you take care of your children i will take care of mine that particular bond that is common to all people because all people originated in one continent it's a village isn't it true Rodwyer and the, the panel that the activity or the actions have always been with us but it is something that has moved out of the bedroom if you will out of the clubs and onto the street but nothing is wrong with walking up and whining nothing right. is wrong with that but it's in where is the, 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 the exposure of the the, 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 the private parts and the simulated sex carnival is for everybody not just for adults so the, 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 those actions and activities therefore are okay but it is where it has been paraded and performed in the public streets yeah as I said I don't mind it, 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 it walking up and winding up and so um, but you know a little naughtiness is a lot different from lewdness and crudeness and open obscenity and vulgarity and exposing your private parts. So what we have here oh. is is the excess of it. No, those are two different things, Webber. Okay, let me take this. Uh, uh, um, call the please, please call the please call back. We are sorry about that. Yeah, the the, the uh, those no, are two different things. No, what 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 I was just. I'm leading off on is you said nothing is wrong with a little bit of this and a little bit of that, correct? I use a little bit just as, as, as a phrase. What okay, I'm saying okay. is... Not in terms of measurement. No, what I'm saying is... Uh, let me take this, Dwyer. Let me take this first. Hello, thank you for holding... Yes, brother, I come back again. Okay, you look at the clown tube, right? What they had. I don't know if you was down here or uh, you look at it. Uh, on TV or whatever. Yes, right? yes, keep talking. Yes, go ahead. Yes. So. Hello? Yes, you, you go ahead. Yes, Just keep talking. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. As you look at the clown tube, right, that they had, how much young girls you see take off the clown tube, have it halfway because they feel hot. <laughs> They take it, they just take it down from up the, uh, uh, on the body and throw it around the waist because they feel hot. Every year, uh, every day you're in this jean pants and this, this got a clothes. It's time to eat your body at Christmas time. A carnival parade day. I wouldn't iron and do it as I said. But if the people want to eat the body, let them eat the body. Who want to see it, stay home. Okay. That's my point of view. If you don't want to see it, stay home because it's going to continue. Okay. Uh, what I talk about, okay, what Mr. Ackerson talking about also, because it's female only when it's sick, they talk about it. Because what he said about Miami, Trinidad, Antigua, and the West Country is him. I wonder what he will say about that. Because he like to, what, what do you want to use, eh? They bring in other country when it fits them. So I would like to say, I would like to know what he has to say about other countries were just like that. Okay. Yes. All right, thank you. Yes. Meloni wanted to, to come in. 
Yes, um, I understand that we have to, everybody is entitled to his or her own opinion and we have to respect everybody's opinion, even the caller, but um, I believe in right in the corner where I am and I do not believe in being um, a copycat and for me it doesn't matter what other, I mean, um, St. Martin just made a statement that you have to have their culture, St. Martin culture displayed in the true that's a rule that they made and assure that persons will have to be governed by it and to not follow or copy what Brazil or Trinidad is doing. What I'm saying is that there is some an alternative to the dress code that we are seeing on the street with the, um, the what you call it again, the G-string. I am saying what is happening, what my, my concern is where elevating we are promoting we are supporting all of that but what about our, our indigenous indigenous art form where are we going with that shouldn't our children also see that being displayed on the street and um, these were what was invented by our own kitchen these art forms and our own division should we celebrate our achievement by you know keeping this this tradition alive and, and our history our heritage our culture rather than trying to adopt other people culture and doing what they're doing out there I don't know if um, I would like to see in Miami or Trinidad um, I would like to see maybe the Johnny Walker or the Japanese girl being displayed um, in those countries since we think that we have to adopt what they're doing do, do they want to adopt what we're doing here so why should we adopt other people when they don't want to adopt us uh, we're ashamed of what we have so we have to go out and, and, and copy other person what they're doing out there because we think what we have not good enough these are questions I, I would wish to ask okay let me take this hello good evening thank you for holding uh, Oh, okay, I'm very sorry, callers. I want you to work with me, right? And just you know, hold on. Yeah, do I? Yeah, well, 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 the lady asked what I thought of Brazil and um, Miami and Trinidad and stuff. But I don't think she heard the commentary because I did say the commentary that we are copying Brazil and Trinidad. Didn't I say that? Yes. And what what my problem is um, has to do with the exposing of people's private parts, the simulated sex, and the sheer vulgarity of it all. I'm not saying that young ladies playing in a clown troupe can't remove the top, but I said pull it down to the waist. They have a, a, a blouse or what do they call those things, like a body fitting thing. People wear those in public. Um, nobody has any problem with that. Okay, but go ahead. Just, so just have a problem with somebody exposing their vagina in public just like that because it's a day for them to celebrate carnival and say let the children stay home then we have a problem we have a problem man that's why it needs to be discussed the <laughs> the do, do, deborah you want to win i agree with miss maloney um that the traditional costumes is a good place to start, it's a good starting point. And maybe there can be some sort of um, encouragement to design along those lines. Maybe uh, in terms of the committees, they can give more support to the people who are bringing innovative ideas that are along the lines of the traditional costumes. And then they will have more of those costumes. Okay. Those types of costumes, by the way, were in back in the days where you had a lot of cloth, you had a lot of um, fabric, cloth fabric, the same thing, you know, expressing the, the, the mass. Those were the types of costumes that brought out our fashion designers, our, our, that kind of culture. This, the bikini and beads, yes, there's creativity somewhat involved in it, um, but it's bringing a different type of designer and so yes it's bringing designers but we, we, I think we, we just want to kind of control the direction that it's going in yeah. okay let me, let me say this hello good evening thank you for holding okay 
if you notice, um, as I asked the rebel, um, I don't want to look at the, 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 the truth then, right? I don't want to look at them. If you know, you know, if some of the males, the males then have on a pants, right? And sell them a female. If a female want to use that costume, they will use it. But they prefer to, to, to just like that because if you know some females, they have on pants too. Because they prefer to just suck. And then, there I am not saying that the children must stay home. I said, if you don't want your children them to see that kind of dressing and behavior, it's your choice to do what you want. You either let home your children or whatever. But he have, he have, in the truth, can have, um, pantsu. And, and the lady that say, um, we, he, he, he was talking about, like, Trinidad and Johnny Walker and them kind of things there. I mean, yes, our culture coming with masculine, mummies, and that's our culture. So we have that part. Pastor so if you want to watch that, you watch that, and then you turn off. If you don't want to see the young girls, then walk up at this place, or just like that. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, maybe... <laughs> Maybe the caller has a point there because if we say that the majority of persons are not in favor of that sort of costume and behavior and then nobody goes to watch it, maybe they won't go to perform it, correct? <laughs> <laughs> um. You're following me. Uh, okay. Okay. Let, let me take this. Let me take this. Uh, hello, good evening. Thank you for holding. Good evening, Rebel. Um, unfortunately, I, I learned I'm late to your show, so much of what I've, I'm about to say may have been said before. Um, every year we have these discussions at this time, and it's like a nine day thing. Well, now it's going on for a couple of weeks, and then it goes away, and this discussion won't come up again until perhaps Kulturama time, or this time next year. We are talking about the children not seeing what the adults have on the street, but all those adults on the street left home dressed like that with the, from those same children. The women, the ladies on the streets are mothers and aunts, and cousins and sisters of the same children that we don't want to see this. It's unfortunate. I agree with Mr. Mr. Estefan. I don't even think so much that the costume is the problem. It's the vulgarity and the behavior when they're in those costumes. I think that's the bigger issue. But the thing is, we have to go back to the basics. Because if we're saying we don't want our children to see this, then how are we going to get around that? How do we get around our children? Those same children in the children's carnival, in another year or two, will be in those adult costumes. I remember one of the things that I found really appalling was um, the parade day. There's a picture where it looks like up along the Bay Road and there's a, a, you can see the water, the ocean in the background, and there's a rail, and all the ladies were bent over that rail, showing every private part they own. Why? Why couldn't it that not have been that they were dancing? Because they had on some very beautiful costumes. I was amazed. And I continue to be amazed every year. I'm a big carnival girl. I come from going to, to Caravana every year when I lived in Michigan for all those years. And I enjoy it. But what I don't enjoy, honestly, is the vulgarity in the behavior. And it, it, to me, it takes away from all the money that people pay now for those costumes because people can't even enjoy the costumes. When you're looking at the behavior, what are we going to do about that? Because 
our children coming behind are going to behave the same way. Those people that we're seeing on the street come out of home where those same children are at. What are we going to do about that? But, but you, you indicated that, that people can enjoy the costumes, but you know everybody won't agree with you in that, right? You, know, you, you can enjoy... What I mean, however, is... And they may not agree, that's fine. My point is, you don't really get a chance to enjoy the beauty of the costume. You, you mean I, in who? The onlooker? The onlooker. But, but the point is, some of us do. Oh, okay. Well, hey. There we go. So, what? <laughs> What are we going to do about this? Because this talk is great for tonight. By the time... Um, but that, that's, what we try, that's what we're trying to get at, because we may not have to do anything about it, but that's what Dwyer said. We should have a, cons a, a discussion, a consultation on it. But at the end of the day, we may end up where we are, because we may well find that more persons, more of us might enjoy watching the costumes as they are than those who are making noise against it, right? One of the, one of the things that I've, you're right, one of the things that I've noticed is we've moved far away from our culture in carnival. We've now picked up somebody else's carnival practices. And, and, and you're right, we, because we are the ones who are doing it. Earlier you said you were not in um, from the beginning, but earlier Dwyer had made a point also, not just with the carnival costumes, but the content of the lyrics of songs being played on the radio and stuff like mm -hmm. that. He wasn't arguing that they shouldn't be played. But to have them on the radio and where and so on and so forth. And I argue that we don't play them. So who is in charge of certain things makes a difference, correct? You, you're, you're right about that. I think that we need to do some searching, soul searching, and make some decisions about what we want now. When it comes to freedom, you can't stop people from doing what they want to do as long as it's within the, the legal um, realm of the law. You know this, right? One of the ways parents used to control or get their children to um, follow or adopt certain values, they would say, okay, you can do it, but not under my roof. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, so they, they, they didn't say that you can't do it. They said you can do it, but not under my roof. Well, well let, me sh let, me, let me share um, a light moment with you. One year, we all decided to come, we were all living, to living abroad. We decided to come back for Kulturama. And we, were, we used to go to the beach every day and enjoy the beach. We were coming home, coming up Main Street, right in front of Evelyn's Drugstore. And the band, because back in those days, the band would jam every, almost every afternoon. They would be jamming. We couldn't, we, did, we realized we couldn't go any further up the road. We just had to pull off to the side. So we decided, me and my sisters and brothers and some friends we had here, that we're going in the band in our swimsuit. And everybody thought that we were crazy. By the time we got home, Mother had already gotten the phone call. And I remember saying to me the day when we were leaving, me was to go, I'm so glad you have gone. I'm so embarrassed. I said, embarrassed for what? We, went, we had on our swimsuits. We weren't naked. And that was a big deal to her. You know, um, we didn't think it was a big deal. We were. We're coming back from the beach. The band coming down. We're just enjoying ourselves. Okay, so? And so... You know, uh, w w what do you do? It's carnival. It's carnival. It's carnival, baby. What do you do? But at the same time, we can't be crying and saying about our children, our children. If we, the adults, are doing what we're complaining about, those adults are coming out of the home of the same children that we're trying to protect. So what are we going to do about that? How do we handle that? That's the bigger question, I think. Um, there are ladies that dress just like what you saw on the street. They go to the nightclubs every every weekend just like that. 
there are some ladies along the streets in Nevis who dress like that every day. And you know who I'm talking about. Okay? There's a culture that has moved in to Nevis. And a lot of them dress like that. And, and you, you can see um, certain parts of what they have on and the, what's supposed to be covered up. And they're walking up and down the streets every day. In the, I see it right here in Nevis. What are we going to do about that? Well, Those are some of the things that we have to look at. Okay. All right. All have right. Good night. Yeah, thank you. Dwyer? Yes, sir. What are we going to be about that? Do about that? Well, Persons dress almost like that every day along the streets, the caller says. Well, I don't think that should be allowed, Weber. If, if people are dressing on the streets of Nevis, um, like that on, on any given day, then something has to be wrong with that. Um, and again, there are laws in place that have to do with public decency and so forth. Of course, the standard of decency is set by the law, and that really is a product of the social vibe. You know, because societies have different levels, you know, and they move from one level to another, up or down, as, as you know, based on how you see it. But if people are walking around in Nevis like that in the day, then, I don't know, something, some, something is wrong. And she said, I think words to this effect that that is like foreign intrusion. I'm using my own words. Um, those things need to be arrested. But in arrested. that regard, in that regard, though, um, how is that different to other areas of society, meaning we're talking about the dress code and stuff like that, and you pointed out that there are laws and so on which um, dictates, you know, that. But there are other areas that laws dictate that we complain about that people don't comply to also. That's correct. So we have a, a, an, an overall, well, we're talking about this particular aspect, but it seems as if we have a breakdown all across the board, but and we're not happy about it, but we're not doing anything about it either, right? Correct. Law enforcement is not enforcing the law. Um, I don't know if they're guided not to do so. And public standards are falling. Some people say, well, so what? And one lady said that some people say the world is ending, so hurry up or whatever. Uh, let the people do what they want. It's carnival. Um, I believe in freedom very much as... Um, I'll be 75 years old in a couple of few days, and I've always fought for people's right to express themselves and so, but I've also found out over the years that freedoms are not absolute. There's, there are levels of public morality that must be kept, and the level at which it is kept must be a function of how the country feels. And this is why I keep saying there should be a public consultation on these things. But if we do the public consultation, consultation, Dwyer, uh -huh. and the evidence shows that the how the country feels is how it is now in terms of the behavior, you're okay with that? No. But it's <laughs> how we, you, you do public consultation anyway. Right, but but, but what, I'm, what I'm asking is, if we do the, co the public consultation as you're suggesting, and yeah, the evidence or the result shows that what we want is what we are having right now. Are you okay with that? No, but I'm just one man. I'm not okay <laughs> with it. That's but, why I'm oh, speaking. Oh, okay, but you, you, oh, you, you might be okay with it as one man, but you'll no, work no, no, with I'm it. I'm not okay with it. You, you will work I'm with it. Okay with it. Huh? No, I never said I was okay with no, it. No, no, no. I said if, if it comes out that way you would not be okay with it oh, yes, I would right be. but right but being it is generally how the country feel you'll work with it no i resist it as best you, i can you'll resist it okay because i think i don't believe that i should change my conviction 
because I'm in the minority. Okay, let me take this. Good evening. Thank you for holding. Yeah. Good evening, Rebo. Good evening, Dwyer. Uh, and all who are listening. Now, let me say something you have concerned in this topic. Everybody saying, well, it's, 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 a, it's our culture, and this is only one time a year they do that, and they don't have the problem with it. They do not see anything wrong. And, and um, if you don't want the children them to, to, to see that, keep them home. Now, suppose a man, a big man, go to school, and when the children are out and recess, he go and he take out the prey whip and he stand in front showing the children and wonder if they would, be, they would call police or uh, they would be happy with that. What Dora is saying is that where is the morals? That is a prey with part. It's supposed to be prey with, not supposed to be in the public exposed that people could see it. That is, that is what Dora is saying and I agree with Dora. Nobody said you can walk up, but you can, you're not allowed to expose your, your vagina or your penis in public and think that is right and that is okay and say this is our culture, people doing it. No, 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 no. So because them in Venezuela or Trinidad walking in the street with the, 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 the bottom out the door and the penis and the private, I mean the, the vagina out the door, they only got on a little piece of cloth around the waist. We must follow that too. And say so this is our culture. No, no, no. Our culture is our good morality. Not that. So all who talking about there is nothing wrong with, 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 with exposing the version of the penis. They, they don't yeah. say that because on radio. But they would not be happy if they go to a dance. And a man come in and he got the play with out and walking up to all of them and asking them for that. They ain't going to dance with him. They're going to say, go, no, 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 not you. Go put on clothes and go out in here. Okay. Thank you, Webo. All right, thank you. And do I? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. Yes, do I? Yeah, um, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, as I said, Webo, to your question, I, I would resist it. Um, and I, I don't go with the floor simply because a majority of people feel a certain way. If I have my convictions, those are my convictions. You know? Um, if the majority wants it that way, then that's for the majority. But I don't accept that as my standard. I wouldn't want that. I have two granddaughters. I wouldn't want any one of my granddaughters to be dancing anywhere in public or anything like that with their vaginas exposed. I could understand the little thing and so on, so on but not that rebel. So how could that be acceptable? How could that be acceptable in the public of this country where everybody has the right to pass and repass, whether it's a carnival parade or not? Expose private parts, so carnival justifies that, and then you're going to find some other reason to justify some other behavior, and then pretty soon the whole building of values collapses, and then what does that leave us? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, people need to see. You see, the problem is, we do not see the erosion while it is taking place because we're in the middle of it. But 20, 30 years from now, somebody will say, why didn't those people get up and speak about it? Have a discussion. And see. I am not suggesting that you put away these kind of outfits, although I can't understand it. But regardless of what the theme of the band is, you're still going to see G-strings and feathers. So if you're going to have the middle passage being depicted, how much do you see, how much depiction do you see of the theme of the troop as against the G-strings and the feathers? So are they trying to make the point that the troop is designed to make? I don't think that point is being made. I think that, well, I don't know about it judging criteria and so forth, but it's, it's, it's a lot of G-strings and feathers. And next year, things go the same way. It's going to be a lot of G-strings and feathers. Just that, the, you know, I mean, you have to depict the theme of the truth. I'm not saying get rid of all of that. Not at all. We've been doing this 
1950s. But do, do I, don't you think part of it is the psychology of it? Because in a lot of things, um, let's use a calypso show for instance, right? And a person might have a particular theme in a song. But then he realizes that from a psychological standpoint, he introduces something sexual and it um, maybe piques the interest more so of the judges and the audience and away from the theme and can possibly win. But that is a function of good judging and bad judging. But in Calypso, you are allowed in the competition. You are allowed to be suggestive. But if you are open and blatant about it, I don't think you're going to score very highly with the judges. But, but that's, what, that's what I'm saying. But sometimes you do because well, um, well. So, sometimes, sometimes, uh, uh, aside from the theme, right, you go for what people might gravitate to. But which might be some some before? somewhat of a distraction, no? In what cases that happened? You <laughs> talking about I, let's I, let's I, stick on, on the culture. I saw a fellow once in a calypso competition and he was singing a particular song and he felt that he wasn't getting the connectivity <laughs> that he wanted. <laughs> and so he brought in something real humorous and sexual and the, crowd went wild with that, those lines and so on, he won the crown. You make it Skylar. No, 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 not Skylar. It's it just a strategy. The sexuality was, was relevant to the theme of the song? No. Oh, and, and also, you know also, Dwyer, in advertising, sometimes you do an ad and you put in a, a, a girl suggesting something sexual has nothing yes. basically to do with the product and it sells. Absolutely, oh, but that's what I'm saying. So, yes. so, so you <laughs> so you agree then? No, I don't. That, that that might be what is happening here. Well, nobody. I all I'm saying is, I would like to see, for example, a troupe depicting the Middle Passage, the Mid Atlantic, the Transatlantic slave trade. Well, I would like to see it really. How are they going to depict that in G strings and feathers? I'm not saying it only at G strings and feathers. I'm saying let the message of the truth be conveyed by the costumes and by the performers. And please, do not expose the private part. Is that to ask? Is that too much to ask, Weber? Do okay. not expose the private part. Okay, so what if somebody in a compromise, say, well, okay, I would do the gesturing as you suggest that they do, and then you, you request the middle passage, and they bring a costume depicting with the, um, the middle passage as a compromise. Let me get this. Let me get this. Hello, good evening. You're on the air. Yes, good, good evening, Mr. Webo. Yes. Yeah, when me is a woman too, you know. But when you look at yourself, you're listening to me? I'm listening to you. Okay. When you look at a woman and a man, you have to respect your body. Your body is your, the temple of God. And God not going to like to see what you see. And me wouldn't like that happen in me. This. That you think it's sin, but me wouldn't like it to see it in me this because. God will help us. And you have a nice evening. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes, 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 uh, Deborah, go ahead. Um, Mr. Asafan is speaking to having a public consultation. Is there a particular reason why he's wanting that through government? Can that not be... Um, through a community organization or I mean everybody has a, a microphone in their hand a camera can it not be a private citizen asking the questions the question is to me yes Mr. Asafan I think do I would do do I would do that that's my name um, the government 
would be the most influential agency to launch that initiative, in my opinion, because at the end of the day, it will be the government that decides what, if anything, happens. I, everybody should participate. People who are influencers, people who are on the social media platforms, the Chamber of Commerce, the churches, the teachers of the union, everybody, the Bar Association, everybody. Let everybody chime in. The, the young parliamentarians, the students at the Sixth Form in Nevis and the Bryan College here. So let, let them talk about it. Let the ideas contend. And this could be the start of a really discussive democracy going forward on the burning issues. Rather than quarreling and fighting down each other, let the ideas contend robustly, but civilly, and let us find where we are and where we want to be. But I do think, um, Deborah, that the government is the best agency to initiate and to lead. I could be wrong. I could be. Okay, let me let me um take take this. Hello, good evening. Thank you for holding. Yes, good evening again. Um, the, 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 everybody um uh, their own opinion, eh? But the lady was just calling and said, guardian, like that guardian and judge, she can she's not putting them on. Regard judge, whoever. Some of them I don't know why we just call guardian, fine. And, Mr. Askerson, you must have a talk, so don't think it, down here, with the same topic. Because you're going to get a lot of tongue lashing when you got a talk, so you must have a topic down here. That topic down here, thanks. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, the 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 thing is though that it is always good and healthy, and we always encourage a debate and a discussion on 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 on, on things because I I mentioned this morning on my early program and I reference where there are a number of places in the Bible where you had contending views and ideas and they came to resolutions based on reasoning. So sometimes people can disagree with things but when you discuss it then you reason sometimes yes. we, we find common ground. Yes and you will. Not on everything, but the process encourages us to be more respectful of different opinions. Which is a very healthy process. But if this particular matter can be used as a catalyst to carry us in that direction, a more frank and respectful and tolerant public debate of burning issues, then we are heading in the right direction. Yeah, because I, I am I am one who, who who feels that any issue or problem given good reasoning and discussion not always but sometimes can find resolution. Jared Yes, um, and I hope that we find a resolution to this um, going, what must I say, um, it's, I, I would not accept it as part of our culture. Um, I think it's part of maybe other, somebody else's culture somewhere, but not a part of the, the Nivijan culture. We're just adopting something that belongs elsewhere. And I'm praying and hoping that we start to um, focus on what we have and uh, we can see some vibrant, um, Nivijan, beautiful, with beautiful costuming and, and, and movements and tell the story of, of persons in the, I wouldn't say forefathers, maybe grandfather, grandmother who have created like animals and those kind of people who would have worked hard to bring about some kind of um, uniqueness to our culture in Nivis and, and we have to try and sustain that. Deborah, your final comments? Yes, um, Rebel. I think it's important that we go back into the schools, go into the communities, um, and get some new ideas. 
is build on the existing uh, history, build on on, on, on the past, and but it, it's important to encourage the development of ideas and new ways. This what we're going through here is a phase. This will pass, and I respect Dwyer's um, opinion. I believe it will pass. I don't believe it's going to be permanent. Um, but we have to encourage our people to come forward with their ideas and not shoot down the ideas when, when they come. Okay, let me go to the line for this call. Hello, good evening. Hello, Mr. Hello, Mr. Webber. Good night. I went to the parade to for the two days, right? The Monday and Tuesday. They had on the this train, but I didn't see nobody in vagina. They were well covered up in front. I never seen nobody in vagina. Good evening, Mr. Good evening, Mr. Hubbard. Good evening. I went to the two days with the parade of troops, right? They had a they had on the train, but I never see the vagina. They were well Okay. All right. I, I got you. Um, Dwyer, finally. Dwyer? I, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, your final comments? Well, thanks for, the, for having this discussion. It has been vigorous. People have expressed what you um, The lady said she was there both days, exposed private part. Other people have said different. Um, I would take it that she was comfortable in that she did not see any private parts. And also that she would have been uncomfortable had she seen any. So I'm going to presume that she would have been uncomfortable had she seen any. People have told me that they stuff. Okay? Um, the point is, if this was happening, could it happen? Are we at a point where we need to discuss it and to guide ourselves along the right path? Are we going off on the wrong track? All of these questions can be answered possibly if there's a discussion. At the end of it, it might remain the same. People are going to have their views. This is not intended to create any rancor or bitterness or to have any quarrels with people. This is intended to stimulate people's attention to be conscious and to see what level of morality and conduct and values we are going to accept for ourselves as a society. So that is my motivation for having brought up this topic. And I'll bring up more topics that will stir people's consciences, which is good, and their and, and their and their intelligence, which is good, because that is how we make change for the better in the country. However, we have to be able to debate these things without becoming bitter and angry, hostile towards each other. Again, Weber, thank you for initiating this. Um, I didn't initiate it, you did. And um, I thank Deborah and Janet for participating. And the, and the callers, it was very interesting. And I hope there'll be more of it on a broader scale in the country. Okay, well, thanks much, and, and thanks, um, as usual, for your input in the social and the other aspects of the development of the country. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Weber. This program repeats tomorrow at 10 o'clock, following the VON News Minute. Join the Honorable Mark Brantley tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock for On The Mark. Thank you all again for joining us. This is your voice in the community. Talk that get results. You all have a wonderful evening. The views and opinions expressed on the preceding program are solely those of the participants and do not necessarily the views of the